Hello students, I am Dr. Shehla Rehana, Associate Professor, Department of English, Patna Women's College. Today I am going to give you a brief introduction to the essay, The Culture Industry, Enlightenment as Mass Deception, written by Max Horkheimer and T. W. Adorno. In this lecture, I will deal with the concept of culture industry, examples of cultural and creative industries, and the important ideas contained in the essay. A number of German-American theorists, including Max Horkheimer and Adorno, added to the Marxian theory of dialectical materialism and historical materialism. Together, they make up the Frankfurt School, known for its contributions in traditional Marxism by employing sociological and philosophical disciplines. The school introduced what can be termed as neo-Marxist philosophy. They introduced the new form of the social theory which accommodated the importance of mass culture and communication in social reproduction and domination. Theodore Adorno and Max Horkheimer critiqued modern culture in their book The Dialectic of Enlightenment, originally published in 1947. They analyzed the processes of cultural production, explained its nexus with political economy and thus gave an account of how the cultural artifacts were produced and received. They introduced the term culture industry to describe mass cultural forms which in the wake of capitalism transforms individual from a thinking and discerning subject into an unthinking passive consumer. The concept of cultural industries or creative industries embraces industries that combine the creation, production and commercialization of creative content which can have the form of a good or a service. Examples of cultural industries are film, television, radio, music, books and press. Examples of creative industries are design, architecture and advertising. The term culture industry readily captures the Marxist assumption that cultural forms like painting, operas and films are no different from other consumer products such as cars or television sets, thus affirming the Marxist belief that culture is not an abstract thing produced by an individual genius, but a product of social and economic conditions in society. In the essay, The Culture Industry, Adorno and Horkheimer objected to the growing influence of the entertainment industries, to the commodification of art, to the totalizing uniformity of culture, especially in the country of their emigration, that is the USA. They equated culture industry to factories that produce standardized cultural goods like films, radio and magazine used to manipulate mass society in various ways. They felt that the ent entertainment industry of modern society was just as mechanical, formulaic and dominating as the workplace of the corporates. They have described culture industry as an apparatus of seduction where, to quote them, the whole world is made to pass through the filter of the culture industry. The culture industry therefore produces unthinking masses of people who accept commodified sentiments and entertainment as natural, the concept having been derived from Marxist view of the function of ideology. The man with leisure has to accept what the culture manufacturers offer him. Submissiveness and dependency are demanded of individuals both at work and at leisure. Hokama and Adorno stress that the essential characteristic of the culture industry is repetition. There is a proliferation of standardized and homogeneous products where consumer choice is an illusion. Cultural forms like films, soap operas, painting, songs are no different from cars, television sets or domestic appliances where small product difference masks the fact that all products are essentially identical. Same idea is replicated in politics where the difference between the parties is minimal. They contend that the new media begins to create a new reality 
they write and I quote real life is becoming indistinguishable from the movies the sound film far surpassing the theater of illusion leaves no room for imagination or reflection on the part of the audience unquote when art is standardized it can't be expected to invite individual response the response would definitely be standardized such an art does not pose challenge to existing order of things it reinforces them film radio and print media all form a part of a unified industry aiming at the psychological domination of the masses in the service of capitalist leaders consumers are not given the time or the space to engage in any intellectual response to an artwork as the new media responses are programmed in advance they leave careful indicators in the work to lead them to conclusions and interpretations one can guess the ending of every second movie just after a few minutes of watching it the culture industry curbs any revolutionary potential of the masses as it keeps them away from the anxieties of life created by capitalism and offers them shallow entertainment hence we see that culture industries exist to enforce and reinforce the capitalist ethos it plays a large part in forging the false consciousness that keeps workers pacified within a capitalist society that is to say that the ideal consumer is also the ideal producer they write and i quote amusement under late cap capitalism is the prolongation of work it is soft after as an escape from the mechanized work process and to recruit strength in order to be able to cope with it again but at the same time mechanization has such power over a man's leisure and happiness and so profoundly determines the manufacture of amusement goods that his experiences are inevitably after images of the work process itself unquote when culture is produced through industrial methods questioning and discerning readers listeners and viewers are not very convenient the culture industry wants passive consumers who will be predictable and buy whatever is put in front of them so the corporations which produce cultural products like to segment us into groups with predictable tastes who they can sell the same products with slight variations i quote consumers appear as statistics on research organization charts and are divided by income groups into red green and blue areas the technique used in that for any type of propaganda unquote the essay emphasizes the degradation of serious art as the formerly culture industry replaces the unique counterculture art whose every detail is tailored to the needs of mass consumption devalues the experience of art and dulls the critical faculties of the consumers importantly this vision and theoretical analysis was starkly opposed to walter benjamin's view of media technologies as emancipatory advances which shifted the relation between audience and artwork from one of worship that is aura to one of education and rational inquiry to conclude even after so many years the concept of culture industry is important in sociology media studies and critical theory and it remains functional till this day in describing how mass culture and big businesses are inherently bound together to make up a large scale system of control and exploitation adorno and hakama think that real culture should challenge us stimulate critical thinking and crucially encourage our individuality the products of culture industry however only encourage us to conform and obey in this sense it has more in common with propaganda than real culture Thank you.